everyone, my name is Mary Ann. I work in the education department at the Dallas Museum of Art. I lead our community engagement team. We work with partners and folks all throughout Dallas to create art workshops, programs, and opportunities for folks to create and connect with art and each other. We believe that everyone is creative and that art is for everyone. Um, growing up, I had no idea that my job was something that I could do as a career. So I wanted to share with you all some things that I really enjoyed growing up. Uh, and if you like some of those things, maybe you'll also like working in a museum too. So my sister and I, we really loved making arts and crafts when we were kids. And one of our favorite projects was paper mache. So if you're at home and you've got flour and water, you can make a glue paste. You can dip strips of paper into it. Um, we used to often drape it over a balloon to make vignettes. Um, so at the end, we also had something fun to play with. Uh, and making is something I get to also do at my job now. We work with local artists um, to create different projects. Uh, so it's a lot of fun that art making is part of my job now that I'm also, now that I'm a grown up. I also really loved learning and fun facts and collecting things as a kid. Um, and a museum is really, you know, a collection of objects and whenever a new exhibition opens, I feel like I'm always learning something new. Um, as a kid, I had these fact files about different animals. Each one tells you a little bit about a different animal. So this one's about a monarch butterfly, um, talks about how they migrate from one part of the world to another. Something that's cool at the museum is that we actually have a fact file about the works of art. So when I'm planning a program and researching, I'll pull the fact file for the artwork to learn more about it and you know the artist, the person who made it, the artist. Um, so I feel like, I feel really lucky that fun facts are still part of my life in my job. Um, I was also really interested in history and loved reading biographies, um, especially of other kids from different parts of the world in different time periods. So I was really into the American Girl dolls. Um, and this is the craft book that went along with some of the books. It's about Addie, she's from the 1860s. Um, it has activities that were really popular with kids at that time. So um, this one is talking about shadow puppets. So if you have a sheet at home, you can hang it over a window and you can do your own little shadow puppet show at home. So, you know, in terms of thinking about making things, fun facts, history, and learning about different places and people and cultures, um, you know, that all happened also inside museums. And I think it was one of the re some of the reasons I really enjoyed going to them as a kid, but I had no idea that, um, you know, I never really thought about all the jobs um, that make a museum possible. Uh, so when I was in college, um, I started to think about art a little bit differently. And I studied Latin American history and art history. I think part of the reason why I was interested in those things is because my dad's Puerto Rican, my mom's Panamanian. It was a way to learn about our family and our history and our culture, um, which wasn't really talked a lot about in school when I was growing up. And I interned um, when I was in college at El Museo del Barrio in East Harlem in New York, where I went to school. And that museum was founded by um, neighborhood residents, artists, activists, teachers, um, the neighborhood when it, um, at the time that the museum was started was um, predominantly Puerto Rican and they were really interested in creating a space where their culture was celebrated, their stories could be told. Um, and I really started thinking about the power of art to tell stories um, and really how it can create this magical opportunity for you to see yourself reflected back in some way. Um, so after that, I was really starting to think about working in museums um, as an art educator in their education department and thinking about ways that, um, you know, you could create opportunities for people to connect with art, ideas, and each other. Um, and I think that this idea that Every object tells a story really connects with me. Uh, when I was growing up, my mom was um, a teacher, but also a storyteller. She'd go to libraries and 
festivals and that kind of thing and um, tell Latin American folk tales. So storytelling was a really big part of my life. And I think that in the museum, I really love how an object can tell a whole story. It can tell you about the person who made it, um, the time they were living in, uh, you know, what materials were they using? Were there things that were happening in the world that they were responding to? So an object that I feel that tells a story about me um, is this here. So this is actually a framed, um, a frame of um, part of an old t-shirt. Uh, it says homegrown in Austin. I grew up in Austin, Texas. Uh, Whole Foods, I know, is now like this big, super fancy like grocery store, but when I was growing up, it was really something much smaller. Um, and when they opened kind of their first big fancy store, um, they gave out these t-shirts. And we were moving at the time, my sister and I um, were really little, um, and my parents got us these shirts because like Whole Foods, we were also homegrown in Austin. Um, it's where they still live now. We wore these shirts to bed all the time. They were really oversized um, and we decided to frame it because um, it was it was a special memory for us. So for folks who are at home, um, I encourage you to think about what the objects that you have around your house tell people about you um, and what stories that it may tell. So it's nice chatting with you all and I hope to see you all very soon at the museum. Have a great day.